So hello everyone, uh, I'm Guillaume Niber, and uh, I'm a PhD student at uh, Snowpack and uh, Leipzig uh, Sorbonne University. And today in this workshop, we will talk about uh, note taking and knowledge management with Obsidian.md and Zotero. So quite unusual as uh, as we are used to uh, to speak about Python stuff, but today it's not. So um, the primary reception recipient of this uh, presentation are uh, new PhD students or new people who wants to start uh, uh, research. So we will talk about uh, also the basics of Zotero, but also for researchers that doesn't know uh, uh, Obsidian uh, as it is a new software uh, so it was developed in 2020. So uh, here is uh, the presentation overview. We'll talk about uh, first uh, Obsidian, uh, the famous uh, note-taking software, then Zotero, uh, and then the, how, how, to, how to connect uh, Zotero and Obsidian and make uh, wonderful uh, notes uh, based on uh, uh, BIB, uh, BIB databases. And then uh, if we have time, we will talk about uh, some useful plugins if you don't want to uh, to use uh, and to remember the, the commands of uh, Markdown and, uh, and to add also some, uh, some uh, magic things on Markdown. And also some useful uh, Zotero extensions uh, such as uh, the translation or uh, preparing a cloud synchronization in case of uh, a crash. And when I'm talking about a crash, it's not a memory crash, it's an hard drive crash and uh, it, could, uh, it could happen. And then uh, some other tools, uh, such as uh, Google Scholar or, or things like that. So here we go. Um, so Obsidian is a free note uh, taking software. So it's, uh, uh, it operates on markdown format. You have the possibility to link notes together. And that's the really, really cool uh, all things. Uh, you have also some useful plugins, a very, uh, so you have a very high, huge community uh, and, and the plugins are open source and it is a very well uh, documented uh, uh, software. So uh, yeah, it's a proprietary uh, software. Currently there is some open source uh, tools, but uh, that, that doesn't cover all the feature of uh, Obsidian. It's a cross uh, platform software, uh, so you can run it on uh, Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, and iOS. And uh, uh, you create a vault. So it's a local vault. Uh, it, it can be uh, synchronized uh, in, the, in the Obsidian cloud, so, but you have to pay, but you can also uh, synchronize it on, uh, on, uh, on uh, any, any cloud provider you, you want, so Google Drive, uh, Nextcloud, uh, or other cloud. So let's move on the, the practice. Um, so you have, uh, during this presentation, we'll see a lot of uh, QR code. Uh, so if you want to flash uh, and to, uh, in order to download things or to see the website, you, you can feel free. Uh, and the, um, the installation is very, uh, very easy. So here we go. So I have to open my session. And that's it. You, you go to the Obsidian website and you can get uh, the, the Linux or the Windows version. So uh, I, I'm, in a, I'm a Linux software, I'm, uh, operate, I'm in, uh, the, in a Linux operating system. So, so it will be easy, just uh, download it and, uh, and execute it. So, and we have a very good connection here. That's cool. And that's it. So this is the, the first uh, window of Obsidian. So very easy. You just create uh, a new vault. Let's call it uh, workshop links and put it uh, in the desktop and the Obsidian vault folder. And then we create our workspace. So it's a, uh, uh, yes. 
some problem with uh, 3D acceleration. It's not a problem. So uh, this is um, this is a very simple interface and a beautiful in interface. So you have uh, in the left uh, the the user space. You have the the directory and the file. You, you can create a node by using uh, this icon. You have another panel here, and we will see how to use it uh, when when we will uh, start to create a node. So here we go. We create a node. Uh, <laughs> better like this. Let's suppose it, this name of this note is not one. And uh, some uh, some uh, some uh, right markdown things. So we will create an heading, heading one, then a subheading, heading two. So just remember some markdown uh, command. You can create some text here. Mm, and then, in order to, for example, uh, put it, uh, put the text bold, just type two stars. For the italic one, just put underscore between the italic word, and that's it. So, basic stuff. And now, let's see the magic. So you can add tags. So uh, we have a water tag. Uh, and linking a node and viewing a graph view of the links of the nodes. And that will be useful when we will uh, create nodes based on uh, reference files. So for example, we create a second node with another tag, for example, fire. And on node once we want to uh, link uh to the node two so just adding a two square uh, bracket and uh, selecting the node two and now you have linked the node and now you can view a graph of this node and what is very interesting is to add an array an, an arrow sorry and now you can see that node one reference not to and that can be uh, very interesting uh, when you uh, when you have multiple uh, nodes based on article references and you can identify easily uh, a seminal paper which will have many incoming arrows and uh, a survey paper which will have many outgoing arrows so i will i will show you uh, my, my obsidian later uh, for my PhD research. So um, what can we add is uh, the fact that you can also add uh, uh, metadata. So for example, uh, adding, uh, if you want to publish or not uh, a note, so you just have to publish through. Yeah, I forgot one thing. Or oh, uh, adding tags here also in the metadata. So water uh, ice. And that's it. And, and adding tags here is equivalent to what you did with the uh, water in the body of the yeah. water. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, it's equivalent. Uh, no. So you can see the list of the tags uh, in uh, your entire vault here, yeah. and you can do also some research, uh, some search uh, here. So uh, if you add an abstract uh, of your paper in the notes, it will search also in the abstract. And if you want to, to search a specific tag, just uh, add the tag uh, prefix mm -hmm. and search for it. And it will list the notes. Uh, we, we uh, which have uh, the associated tags. Okay. So you can also uh, you have also a, 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 reading, a view, um, reading view, uh, which can be uh, useful if you want to read. Personally, I didn't use I don't use uh, this one. 
Okay, so now we have uh, basing things, uh, a local uh, local vault database, uh, which is stored uh, not here, uh, in the desktop. And for uh, what is a good practice is to synchronize uh, this vault uh, on the web. And each, want, each time you want to create a new vault, you will have uh, a new obsidian with uh, other settings. So a vault contains all the settings you have set uh, for your uh, needs. So that's it for the, this first part. So we'll see um, now. Just yeah. a quick question. You can include the images in the notes? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. guess so. But yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> so, uh, by uh, the by by using plugins. So okay. there are some uh, of them uh, that use uh, the lat a LaTeX backend. So, so yeah, for example, this is for image or for uh, or, or for any things. Yeah. I, I will show you also. Uh, an example with uh, Excalidraw, which is a software to, to draw some uh, diagram. So I can add also HTML. So here is a, a small uh, video found on YouTube. And I put it here. And now I have my video here. Hmm. So that's the same things for images, for images, just add uh, the, the link to an images, an image, and put uh, an exclamation point to see the image, as the image is not uh, found. It won't, uh, it won't be displayed here. So uh, let's go back to Zotero now. So Zotero is a bibliographic software and management. And it's a cross-platform one, uh, so currently running officially on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and iOS. There is some unofficial, app, unofficial apps on Android. There is also online sync features, so it could be a good thing if you don't want to uh, to use uh, uh, a Google Drive platform uh, at the beginning. Uh, you only have uh, 300 uh, megabytes uh, of free uh, free space uh, by using the online uh, official Zotero feature. And uh, starting from the version 6, you have an integrated PDF viewer, which is very useful when you want to do some annotations or translation uh, using uh, an application, an uh, extension. You have also uh, other um, other uh, bibliographic uh, management tool, uh, such as Mendeley and Enodes, most of them are very, uh, very good also. Uh, so Mendeley is free and closed source and developed by Elsevier, and Enodes is a commercial one developed by Claritech. Uh, currently, there are some uh, also uh, uh, discussion on the, uh, on the forums of uh, Obsidian in order to integrate uh, uh, and, and to make a link between Mendeley and Enode. I, I don't know the status of that. Uh, I think it's about, uh, it's a community, uh, uh, it will be through the community plugins. So just waiting for the, for the community to release some, some tools. I, I think it could work also with uh, what I, what I uh, will explain later. So uh, in order to install Zotero, it's also very easy. Um, just uh, go to the Zotero website, click on download and uh, install uh, for your platform. There is, for Linux, a very easy way to do that uh, by using a, a flat pack Im uh, image. So, uh, so you just have to install flat pack. Uh, so for Ubuntu, it's uh, with the APT, adding a FlatHub uh, repository that contains the Zotero application and install uh, uh, the Zotero app. And after that, we have the application and it is easily runnable by uh, Linux. It should work normally. Yeah. 
So this is also a very simple interface. So uh, for the basics, um, we have a library which will contain all your uh, bibliographic references. Uh, and in order to add references, you have multiple ways to do that. So either, either by uh, drag and dropping uh, some articles, for example, there is a preprint pre here, you download the PDF and just putting uh, on a file. So I am here. And drag and drop here. On, uh, on the Zotero application. And Zotero will try to gather the metadata. So if it's not working, you can add uh, the metadata manually. Or currently it is not the case, it is automatically uh, done. Uh, it will gather the metadata and you will have uh, the titles, the authors, the abstract, and it can be easily exportable in a uh, big format, so big tech or uh, better big tech. I will, uh, I will explain it later because and better big latex, because currently big tech lack of support of uh, UTF-8 uh, UTF UTF format. And that's a little bit annoying uh, sometimes. So you can add uh, you can add also references uh, by using the magical tools. Um, uh, so just putting a DOI, DOI or uh, an ISBN uh, here. So here is uh, an article from uh, I3E, and now uh, it gathers the information. And now you have uh, the metadata. There is one other wonderful thing of Zotero is that you can gather also the PDF if it is available. So if you have a, an institutional access or if it is uh, an open access article. So currently it has been found. So I think this one is not uh, an open access uh, PDF. And uh, you have also another thing, which is the Zotero connector which is a, an extension you, you add to the web browser and uh, will detect uh, if you are on a, on a publisher uh, website or uh, an article, uh, a PDF article. Mm. So by adding this extension, so we'll see how we have to restart uh, Zotero and also Firefox, I suppose. And now, if we if we want to uh, to download an article uh, by uh, by using the connector, uh, so we are waiting for Zotero uh, to to start. So yeah, just click here, and it is automatically saved with the PDF if it is available. This one is an open access article, so it is easily um, downloadable. So now, we, yeah. Can you maintain different libraries? And when you download um, stuff uh, automatically, where are they put? Uh, so I don't know where are they are put, but there are online library, the Zotero library on the, on the web. I think if you create an account on the Zotero uh, uh, website, uh, you will be able to access to this uh, library. Uh, no, but I mean on your machine. Ah, yeah. Can, can, like, can, can you download stuff in separate folders and can you make? Ah, yeah, yeah, of course. Might... Okay. So we, 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 it's uh, the collection uh, system. So, okay. so, I think it has a part of my question I have. Can you organize your, your library by systematics? And... Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, for example, if you want to create a folder which is related to uh, anonymous communication, you create a collection of articles. And so, when you use the add-on of the browser, you, you can click? Of course, okay. of course. 
not the, the choice. Uh, so if we go to Google Scholar, let's suppose we want to, to, to get the first article and just selecting uh, the collection of anonymous connect, uh, connections. And can you bring the files? The files together? Uh, yeah. Yeah, when, when, you, when you save the file uh, on your machine, can you choose the name? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we took it uh, after. Uh, so I use a specific extension, which is called the ZOT file, and which is responsible for renaming the PDF file according to a specific pattern. Uh, so I usually like to have uh, the author and the date and then the title. So we have um, now uh, our library. We can so move these, uh, to a specific collection. So we have one, one, uh, one article to this collection. Uh, I have some trouble with uh, virtual machine and uh, 3D acceleration. So. But yeah, not, not a problem for uh, this presentation. Yeah. So uh, we can use uh, the Zotero uh, synchronization system uh, to uh, synchronize uh, the system and, uh, and the library, and also indexing uh, the content of the PDF, uh, the downloaded PDF. So generally it's a text content and you can make some search if uh, you are using your iPad after having using your, uh, your PC. And, uh, and that's it. So I won't show you how to use the, the registering uh, system. It is uh, very easy. So I, I will give you the, the presentation slides uh, after the presentation. Excuse me, yeah. just a question about Zotero. Um, can you, for instance, uh, uh, have a look for um, uh, a specific string in the PDFs of uh, the article, uh, uh, or let's say uh, a collection of articles or something like that? See what I mean? Mm, not really. Uh, 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 let's say I want to, 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 to search through uh, all the all the articles about anonymous collection, I want to search. I don't know BitTorrent, uh, for example, in in the body of the PDFs them, themselves, mm. and, and to, to find all the PDFs that con contain a specific set, uh, a specific string inside yeah. the ones that are in your collection. You, yeah, I don't know. You don't know. Okay. No, I don't know. Uh... I, I, I have some idea here. Maybe uh, I think yeah. If you make a research for the keyword you want, I think the Zotero is able to give you all of the papers containing this uh, keyword. Actually, I tried it and it works fine. Okay. But okay. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Me too. I'm so changing my. Okay. <laughs> So you can also add tags. Um, so when you download uh, articles and uh, and references. Uh, sometimes you can have uh, automatically added tags. So for example, for deterrent, you have this tag, but if you want more uh, custom made tags, just add, uh, for example, Tor or uh, onion routing. And after that, when we will uh, make, a, make a search uh, by, uh, by adding, uh, by, search, by looking for uh, onion routing, we will have uh, the deterrent, uh, target uh, one and that's almost uh, the basics one no no more no, no less uh, uh, we will see after uh, some uh, useful uh, extension also but now come back to uh, the obsidian uh, system and um, we'll see how to link node so we have to First, install the Better Bibliotech library because Obsidian is able to, to read only Bibliotech files and, uh, and, and also another type of file, but not the Bibliotech uh, file. 
Uh, better bibliotech is also useful when you want to generate a side key without any problem. So the side key will be uh, uh, a, a way to uh, to uh, specific to render a, a reference in a document. So when you use la LaTeX, you will have to use site and the site key. It will be the same for Obsidian. And the same uh, if you want to use uh, LibreOffice or uh, Microsoft Word, but I think nobody is uh, using uh, it uh, computer science or mathematics. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah. So uh, for the better bit of text, just go to the, to the website, to the install uh, pages, and gather the latest release on uh, GitHub. It's an open source uh, uh, extension. So yeah, we we'll download it on uh, Azotero extension. And for the installation, just go to tools, add-ons. Ah, it's already installed. So let's, let's suppose it was not installed and uh, install it. Okay, so just to, to be sure that I Um, uh, have better uh, BTEC exports, yeah. uh, generate better BTEC uh, entries. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So Zotero is currently up. Uh, I thought we were talking about Mac OS. So iOS, I have no ID. Sorry. Oh, so, I understand, but I don't see anywhere. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, for iOS, I think, I think for this presentation is just to use uh, Zotero and with Obsidian, and I think it will be more difficult to use. Uh, my my proof okay. says that it does not work for Mac. Ah, okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, it, it, it seems like the file is somehow corrupted for Mac, but maybe there will be uh, other means to, to do the installation correctly. So we will check later, thank you. Okay. So uh, let's start by uh, configuring, configuring uh, our uh, site key. So we have to go to the preferences. And this is a citation key uh, formula. So generally, what I like is to configure uh, my site key by using this one. So this is, uh, my site key for a specific article will be the name of the first author, then the second or uh, it all, and uh, an underscore and the month and the year. And if there is no month, there will be only the year. And if there is no date, everything is broken. It's a long key. Uh, yeah. That's a long key. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I should try to use a... Uh... Just uh, out of curiosity, if there are two articles by the same author and the same year, it will ABC or, ABC or what? Yeah, three, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so better bit, uh, better bit tech uh, avoid uh, collision between uh, key and uh, so there, there is a verification each time you want to create uh, an article which has the same author and at the same date. So that's it. And now we can export our library so we can configure the, 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 tab, the tab and add me a, a column which is the site key. So where is it? Yeah, citation key. And now we have our citation key here. Yeah. And this citation key will be used both for Obsidian or for LaTeX articles. So we can export our library using the better bibliotech uh, functionality. Um, one, one cool feature is uh, the keep updated one. So each time you add um, 
uh, references, our BIP file will be uh, updated and will be uh, also updated for Obsidian or LaTeX. <coughs> And let's suppose uh, we save uh, uh, this library Yeah. So now come back to Obsidian. We have to install an extension from the community plugin uh, uh, store. So all of the extensions that are uh, uh, provided in uh, uh, in Obsidian are open source, and you have just to turn on the, the plugin and uh, search for the citation plugin. Just click on install, enable it, and go to the option. So you have to, uh, so Obsi uh, the citation plugin can uh, import. Uh, to database format, uh, so CSL, JSON, or B Bibliotech. So we'll go to the B better Bibliotech one. Uh, the pass uh, could be a relative pass to the Obsidian Vault or an absolute pass. So mine is uh, located at, uh, uh, in the desktop. And now, it has loaded four references. So we can add a literature of node folder where uh, each time I uh, invoke this uh, plugin, uh, citation plugin, the node will be stored automatically in this folder. So let's suppose it is uh, reading notes. <clears throat> and uh, we have also a template, a template settings. So we can customize uh, uh, a template in order to to create a custom notes. So each time you invoke the plugin, you will have a notes which have pre uh, prefi pre field fields. So what I would like, what I like is this one. I have uh, it's a it, it's a really cool template. So I add some metadata and some titles, uh, some headings. And uh, I, I like also to uh, name my notes using first their site key in order to be efficient to, uh, to retrieve my uh, notes. And that's it. So now we have our plugin. And the only command, the only two commands you have to remember is Control Shift O. So when I use Control Shift O, I will be able to create or to open an existing node based uh, by looking at the the library. So for example, this one. Yeah, I forgot to create uh, the reading node uh, folder. For example, this one will be created with uh, this uh, prefilled uh, element. And now we can create another node. And for example, uh, another one. And now we can uh, add reference and link the nodes together. So either by using the other command, which is Control Shift E. So yeah, I should write it uh, and uh, make a reference to, for example, the first one or using a double bracket. Uh, so the initial uh, system and uh, and selecting a note. So you can have both uh, the full note uh, name or an alias. An alias is defined uh, in the metadata. And uh, what I have defined is to use the side key. And in order to make an alias to a note, you just have to uh, to put a pipe just after the, the name and put uh, the, the alias. And that's it. And now we can go back to our graph view and we have a graph view of uh, our article. So normally it's 
it's more uh, smooth uh, when the, we have the, the Schrodinger acceleration. And um, I really like the, the 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 fact to have arrows to identify quickly uh, a seminal paper or uh, uh, a survey. And the more you have arrows that are coming from uh, to you, the bigger the node will be. So, uh, uh, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Uh, did the arrows mean that the paper one is referencing somehow the paper two, or is it's just a, a representation? It, it, it's just a representation, and okay. it means uh, that, uh, so, for example, you have a paper and you have many references uh, in the paper, in what uh, reference, uh, all the reference of the paper will only reference uh, the notes you have already written, so by using the, the famous command uh, control shift o Okay. Thanks. So now we have uh, the power of uh, Zotero combined with uh, uh, Obsidian. And what we can add is uh, some useful extensions. Uh, so for example, uh, the management of tables. Uh, because uh, using Obsidian, you can create uh, tables, but it can be quite uh, uh, long. Uh, a plugin to create um, drawings, which is called uh, Excali Draw, and uh, an editing toolbar plugin if you don't want to uh, to remember the commands for uh, uh, putting a text in bold or in italic. So if you do like uh, Google Doc uh, toolbar, uh, this extension is for you. So uh, for downloading them, it's the same thing. So you just have to go to the community plugin store, search for, uh, for example, the first one, uh, the toolbar editing, uh, editing, the editing toolbar, just installing, enable it, and that's it. And so you have an editing toolbar here. You can put, uh, you can add some color uh, using uh, the, the, the GUI. And that's it. It's just basically uh, HTML. And so uh, if you want to add some diagrams, just add uh, some uh, another extension which is called Excali Excalidro, a very popular one. And now you have uh, at the left toolbar uh, a small icon uh, which is a pencil, and you can create a new drawing. So, for example, uh, some circle. <laughs> yeah, not a very good uh, drawer. And that's it. So, we have our drawing here. So, Excalibur uh, has, uh, has created a folder. And if you want to, uh, to uh, integrate it uh, in, a, in a node, just drag and drop and uh, adding add, uh, an exclamation point. And that's it. And the latest extension, the latest uh, extension, the last extension is the table and answer plugin. So this one is very particular because it's currently not available on the community plugin store. Apparently there is a problem of open source licenses, but maybe it will be solved soon, but you can uh, install it uh, uh, through uh, GitHub. And uh, uh, so the ID, you, uh, you, you install the extension and by doing a, a right click, uh, you will have a new option, which is create a new table. And you will be able by uh, moving the mouse to select the number of row and the number of column. Uh, and um, 
and for example, this is four and four columns. So if if you if you create uh, and four and four columns, you won't have a four and four tables. You will have uh, also the header the header uh, line, and that's it. And you can write uh, uh, inside without uh, without uh, uh, thinking about the markdown uh, uh, things to do uh, tables. Voila. So yeah, this, this is a manual installation of this uh, tool uh, on, on Linux. It, it should be very similar for Windows or Mac OS. Uh, just uh, gather the, the GS and the JSON file and put it in a specific folder and put it in the plugin folder of your uh, Obsidian Vault. So yeah. Uh, another thing which can be interesting if you want to use uh, the reading view. Uh, so when when you switch to the reading view, you 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 are not able to see anymore the metadata. So if you want to re-enable this uh, uh, specificity, you just have to go to the option to the editor and then uh, toggle on the show front matter option. And now you are able to see the metadata. Just a miscellaneous thing. So yeah, and and after that, uh, we can also talk about uh, some uh, useful Zotero extensions, such as the Zotero PDF Translate. Uh, it's going to be very useful if you are not uh, uh, at ease with uh, some languages. And um, so th all of these extensions are uh, open source and available on GitHub. So just go back to uh, our Firefox and download the, these extensions. So for the Zotero uh, PDF translate, just go to the release part of uh, the GitHub uh, site repository. Then we just have to install this extension using the classical way. And then that's it. So you can tweak a little bit uh, if you want uh, the, the extension. So for example, translating from uh, English to, to French. And uh, yeah, I, I disabled this one because uh, each time you select a text, it will be uh, uh, saved in uh, in the annotation uh, system of Zotero. It's not very useful, and and that is. And when when I want to uh, to see um, a file, I just have to select so some file some uh, some text. And the text will be translated. Yeah. Voilà. Another cool feature is the Zot file uh, extension. So this one is uh, really cool in order to um, uh, manage your files. So uh, adding some um, uh, renaming rules uh, when you download the PDF. And putting in a specific uh, folder that can be uh, further um, synchronized in, a, in another uh, cloud uh, uh, provider. So uh, same thing. Just uh, we have to to go to the Zot file website. Mm -hmm. okay. Download uh, the uh, extension and install it uh, with the uh, Python manager of Zotero. And then tweak a little bit uh, the settings of, uh, of the file. So it will take a little bit uh, time because uh, it was, uh, I'm using a virtual machine.
yeah and so when you go to tools you have uh, zot file preferences and you can add uh, some renaming tool uh, renaming rules when you download a pdf so what i use uh, so I, I, yeah yeah i use uh, this one so I, I will like no, this is not this one but i would like to have uh, the the author without underscore the year and uh, the t is a title and uh, this one is for patents uh, so you can tweak also uh, a little bit when you are downloading uh, patents yeah and uh, you can also specify the location of your pdf file so for example we will uh, put it uh, in um, here so putting the zotero pdfs here so what can be very interesting is to do this uh, thing at uh, the very beginning uh, and each time you download a pdf file from uh, zotero it will be automatically uh, renamed so maybe an example uh, using a google scholar Back to this one. If I download this survey, so we are waiting for the full text. I hope you have it. Maybe not. So a little bit sad so okay yeah no full text uh, okay text test uh, is this one normally it should work So, and this text was automatically remained according to my rule. So, who et al and uh, uh, the date and uh, the title, uh, the title which which is apparently not uh, not the right one. So maybe I made a mistake uh, during the the renaming uh, uh, rules. But yeah, you can tweak. You have uh, the whole documentation on the mm -hmm. internet. It's it's a very easy. Uh, Alt, because in fact there is, there was a short title uh, field in the in the metadata ah, yeah. of the article. Yeah, maybe uh, yeah, the, uh, a bit longer. Ah, yeah, yeah. Short title. It was a short mm -hmm. title. It was a short title apparently. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is fine, by the way. So yeah, you have uh, the. The rules and the, and the yeah, yeah for the title. After, uh, after. And I, I have yeah. sorry, I have a quick question also from when managing with the PDF files in Zotero. Uh, if you remove the paper you already downloaded uh, on your laptop, if you remove the source, which is actually a known in Zotero, uh, Zotero is not able to retrieve these files. Is Zotero managing with some cache or not? Uh, I don't really know about this. Uh, in order to be sure to save everything, uh, what I do is to save the profile of Zotero, uh, which is uh, located in a uh, in a specific uh, folder so you have the data directory location yeah yeah and uh and uh an attachment based directory so this is where uh, the the pdf are downloaded so if i so what i do but i don't know if it's uh, right uh, right uh, 
correct uh, way to do is uh, I use the same uh, the same attachment directory for uh, Zot file and Zotero, and uh, I'll also save uh, the data directory. And when I uh, move everything, I just uh, reset uh, my uh, my path to the new path that contain uh, my settings and my attachments. Okay. But okay, so if it works, I haven't removed uh, my Zotero. It's uh, it's too much precious for me. So okay, thanks to the future. Yeah, another cool extension is this is the last for Zotero. Uh, and this is the last, uh, the last. So this is the, the Zotero citation count. Uh, so it, uh, it allows you to uh, uh, gather the citation count from a specific article from um, uh, some sources. Uh, which are uh, Crossref and uh, and other source. So yeah, I'll go back to my presentation. So from uh, Crossref, Inspire, NASA, and Semantic Scholar. And uh, yeah, it it was very useful when I started my PhD when I wanted to uh, to uh, to search the to find the seminal paper and to see how okay I'm. Uh, I mean, I'm probably in the good way, and this is probably the seminal paper. So yeah, so this is very uh, very cool, and uh, you you can um, you you have this uh, information uh, in an extra field of uh, your bibliography. Bib, uh, bib so just uh, you have to add the add in like usual. So yeah. Yeah, we will have to wait a little bit. Uh, so restart uh, in of uh, Zotero. And now we can use the citation uh, count extension. So we have a, a, new, um, a new option in the menu. Uh, manage citation count and get a cross ref citation count. And now it download it downloads the the citation count and put it in an extra field. So where where it is? Yeah, it's not here. So try again. Maybe uh, I don't I don't really know. So yeah, I should investigate citation count. So do, do you see? No. Maybe the, they don't know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, apparently it's not working uh, today. Yeah, so sometimes uh, I suppose that the crossref uh, doesn't have any idea of uh, of the number of uh, citation. Yeah, let's try with semantic scholar. And yeah. Yeah, I, I only have the, this extra information, which is not really useful. Uh, but yeah, you will have normally if uh, Crossref or Semantic Scholar or, or the other know the number of citation, you will have the number of citation added to uh, this extra field uh, of Zotero. Yeah, like uh, like here. So for example, for this one, uh, there were thirty-seven citation. So it's strange because I, I thought I have uh, I tested it. So this one, this one. Yeah, it's working for this one. So maybe Crossref uh, don't know for uh, the other one. Yeah, maybe also.
and some other useful tools uh, for uh, new researchers, new PhD students, uh, a little bit oriented uh, to computer science and uh, electrical engineering. Uh, Google Scholar, Google Patents, uh, so uh, good search engine for academic literature search and uh, patent search. DBLP for the computer science bibliography, you can download uh, uh, multiple in multiple file formats. Uh, so there is an example uh, here. So, for example, I'm uh, browsing a uh, uh, journal, this one, uh, and then I have some uh, paper and I can export a record, uh, so a big tech uh, or other things. And what is cool is when I export a big tech, I can import it uh, to Zotero. And when I export uh, my Zotero collection, it will be in another uh, 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 format which is better bibliotech, but as we have um, uh, ticks, uh, the keep updated box, um, it will be uh, done automatically and smoothly. Uh, E3Z Explore, ICM Digital Library for the Database, HAL, uh, it was a French project of an open archive. And uh, Springer Nature and Xavier. So it's not it's a non-exclusive list, and yeah, feel free to uh, to play with the links uh, that are located in this slide. And that's it. Jan, or to play with it without knowing the Markdown language, if you want to use uh, the famous uh, toolbar. Uh, we have also learned the, the basics of Zotero and some useful plugins and extensions and um, and some useful tools on the internet, uh, so such as uh, search engine for academic literature paper and bibliography. That's it. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, feel free. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, are there any documentations to go further, to go beyond the uh, the slides? Sorry? Are there any documentations, uh, let's say, on Obsidian, for example? Yeah, of course. To go uh, further. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there is uh, Obsidian help, uh, which, is, uh, so, uh, which is very well documented. And it's a uh, yeah, documentation uh, directory of Obsidian. Uh, so here we go. And now uh, you want to understand uh, how to install the app, uh, or, or, or to uh, to create a node, uh, or to add custom steel styles. Great notes. Hey, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Um, another question. Uh, so let's assume that I have my let's say all my bibliography in uh, Zotero slash Obsidian uh, in Zotero. And uh, I want to, to generate the, the bib file for a specific article. And I just want a subset of, uh, because I don't want to generate a huge uh, bib tech file. So uh, there is a way to maybe check the articles that I want to export in a bib tech file. Or how do you do it uh, usually? Uh... I export the whole. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say maybe using a collection and export just the collection if you have already. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, that. To follow up the, the, the question, uh, so if you can you make a collection with some links to uh, to reference in other collection in order to. To, to just select some some uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, mm. uh, related question is uh, it, so the, the one collection is like a folder in the sense that they cannot intersect, or yeah. are they like tags in the sense that they can intersect? Uh, no, no, no. A collection is uh, yeah, uh, really just like a folder, folder and uh, yeah. Okay. So. It's, yeah, yeah, that's also tags. Okay. You you can do an union uh, by uh, gathering the 
two exported bib file from the two collection on yeah. the emerging yeah. intersection. Yes, you had a question. Yes, how easy it is to manage one connection between multiple uh, users? Like, for instance, you're writing a paper and the collection of this paper, maybe you want all the authors to, to participate and to access it in a synchronized, synchronized way. Is it easy? Is it? Uh... I have no idea. I've never, I've never tested uh, okay. that thing. So, because ideally, you would like, like a git, but for, uh, for references. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, we did can you export import a collection from uh, someone else? Or... Uh, normally, it should be easy. Uh, so I know it's it's feasible using uh, the the Zotero account, but you have to create one. So I know that there is uh, some public collections on on the web. So yeah, but importing a collection from another uh, locally should be very easy also because when you export a collection, you have a bip uh, uh, file, and so you can import it uh, using uh, Zotero. So this could help uh, the translation uh, manually uh, what uh, to be able to. But yeah, and, and another indirect way to do it maybe is just to uh, Dropbox the the folder where where there is the the Zotero. The Zotero, uh, uh, but say Zotero will automatically adjust when you modify manually for folder, right? So, yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there is an indirect way to do it. Yeah. So, uh, 